Hello and thank you for watching. I'm Ashley Van Dyke with Advantage Software and on today's video, how to create macros with Macro Recorder, I'll show you how fast and easy it is to make custom macros in Eclipse. Using the Macro Recorder is a fast and simple way to make macros out of strings of commands that you frequently use. The first thing that I'm going to do in order to create a macro is open a document. The macro that I'm going to create first is a macro that will insert a comment line for your scopist and advise them to check the audio for a portion of your document. And for that type of macro, we'll need a document open. And so once I'm in the document, um, I can go up to edit, macro, and record to start the macro record process. Once I press record, the only thing that this system is going to accept is keyboard input. Macros are made up of keyboard commands rather than mouse click commands. And so if I click on something like an auto magic command over on the left, I get an error message that the macro recording has stopped because only keystrokes are allowed. So I'll press okay to that. And so the macro recording that I stopped started has been ended for me because I did something that it's not going to be able to accept. And so what I want to do now is go back up to edit macros and record. And this time I'm going to use only my keyboard to do what I want to do, which in this case is to insert a comment line that says check audio. So I'll press on record. And now it's, ex it's expecting me to input only keyboard commands. So I'm going to start off my macro. In this case, I have hyper keys on, and this is a macro that's going to require me to type some text. So I'm going to turn hyper keys off by pressing N. And then next, I'm going to open the print commands window by pressing Alt N. And comment is the second option in this window that starts with a C. So I can just press C twice to get to comment, or you could arrow down if desired. Once comment is highlighted, I can press Enter, and that'll create the comment in the document. And now I can type in whatever text I want in this comment. In this instance, like I said, I'm going to use check audio. And since I am a hyper key user, at the end of this, I'm going to press enter to turn hyper keys back on. And if I want to get out of the comment, instead of leaving my cursor here, I can press enter again to move back into the regular part of the transcript. So now that macro is complete and I can go back up to edit macro and record to stop the macro. This is the only kind of clickable input that's going to be acceptable when you're using the macro recorder and it is only to stop the process. So when I press record again, and this is the macro editor window, and these are all of the commands that I would have had to previously input manually in order to create this macro without the macro editor and macro without the macro recorder. And you'll see that in here, the letters that I had capitalized, which was the C in check, says Shift plus C, and that allows it to type in the capital C for me. And so there are two options that I need to complete in this window in order to finish creating the macro. The first one is to give this a name. And so I'm going to say insert comment, check audio, since it inserts a comment that says check audio. And then I'm going to give this a speed key. I'm going to just select one that I know is not already in use by anything. And I'll assign this one to Control Shift Alt X and press OK. And you'll see that under standard, it says Control Shift Alt X. If I wanted to, I could also assign a separate hyper key. So if I wanted to, I could make this one uh, Shift Alt D perhaps. And so I have a standard key, control shift alt X and a hyper key key shift alt D. And I can press okay out of there. And that macro is now gonna be in the list and either of those hype, uh, either of those keystrokes, the hyper key or the standard key should work. So if I press a shift alt X, it looks like the macro did something. And if I move up one line, you'll see that I have a new check audio command. I'm gonna go ahead and remove that one and I'll move the, remove the one that we made when we were recording the macro and I'll do that again. And first I'll turn on my print commands so you can see it actually go in. So if I press Control Shift Alt X, which was my standard key, I get a check audio print command comment. And if I press Shift Alt D, which was my hyper key command, which since I'm in hyper keys, that'll work too, I get another comment that says check audio. And so this saves me several keystrokes in order to notify my scopus that they need to check something.
This is also the kind of macro that you could modify easily to work from your real-time steno machine. And to do that, we can go to your user settings and go to the edit tab, click on macros, and this macro will be listed in alphabetical order. And it's under insert comment, check audio. And so if I wanted this to be for real time, I could double click on it. And ahead of the very first command, I can click add command. And I wanna select translate notes and press okay. And then what that does is it'll make sure that everything is finished translating before the macro is run. And then it'll run the macro and it'll insert this print command. And it'll do it wherever your cursor is in the document. If you wanted to do it in a specific location, you could add like a bottom of job command here. And with this modification, it would always go to the bottom of the job and then run the macro. So this would be basically in front of the last paragraph that you're writing into in that instance. And sometimes that may be desirable, but sometimes you might not want to have that in there so that you can move your cursor around and put that anywhere you want it with your steno machine. And if you do want to use this kind of macro from your steno machine, you don't want to have speed keys in here. Um, instead, you would go to dictionary entry and make a, key, a steno keystroke um, for this macro in order to insert the comment for your scopist. Um, so you could have a keystroke like this, and this way it'll automatically insert an entry into your dictionary that when you write com com, the macro will run to insert a comment that says check audio for your scopist. The second macro that I'm going to show you how to make will show you how to toggle an option in your display tab. In this user settings, I have my font set fairly large so that I can see everything. However, when I have my time codes displayed, I can't see my right hand margin. I don't need to see my time codes all the time, however, I only need to refer to them occasionally. And so what I'm going to make do is make a macro that'll toggle the, the left margin on and off so that I can show and hide my time codes and this other space that's in the left margin. That'll allow me to see my whole transcript when I need to, and also see the time codes when I need to refer to them. And so if I go up to Edit, Macros, Record, the first thing that I want to do after I hit Record is get right into the macro. So I'm going to press Alt-U for User Settings. And to get to the Display tab, I'm going to hit Write four times. And then in here, the left margin, you'll see that it has an underlined number one next to it. And that means that I can use Alt-1 to check or uncheck that box. And so if I press Alt-1, the box becomes unchecked. And I can press Enter to close out of my user settings. And now I can go back up to Edit, Macro, Record. And you'll see that I have my macro built that'll turn my left print margin on and off. And it has user settings, write four times, Alt-1, and Enter. So I'm going to assign this speed key. I'm going to reuse the speed key I used before, and it's going to notify me that this is already in use. And I'm going to go ahead and replace it with this new command. And I will call this macro toggle left print margin view. And I'll press OK. And if I hit the speed key I assigned, which was Control Shift Alt X, you'll see that my left print margin and therefore my time codes pop up. And if I press it again, they go away. The macro recorder will help you save time and make more money per page and is simple and easy to use. As always, tech support is happy to help. So please call us if you have any questions at all about macro recorder or macros in general. If you have questions about the Macro Recorder, Macros, or any of Eclipse's other great features, please feel free to reach out to our anytime 24-7 technical support at 800-800-1759 or 772-288-3266 for international callers. As always, email support is available from support at eclipsecat.com. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel and like this video if you enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.